We back. Episode, what is this, 14? Wow. I've got bottles. I've Even got bottles. Away. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, well, we were delayed in our recording a little bit because Mons was hitting the links. What would you think of the golf courses? Um, There were there were no, like, COVID restrictions at this one. I, I yeah. know when I went last week, they kind of, they gave it a go at least. But, yeah, there it, it seemed like everything was pretty much back to normal at, at this particular place. Um, Can you actually put the ball into the hole? Yeah, the flags were removable. Um, the, yeah, there was basically nothing out of the ordinary, so that was like kind of refreshing. It's also like kind of scary though, because it's like you guys, you motherfuckers, like forget that there's a epidemic going on. Have you not thought about my grandmother once? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go? Right. Uh, it's up in Delaware. It's called Oak Haven. It was, it's, it's a pretty neat course. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, Echo and Piqua in that like the front, there's a bunch of like tall grass and like water hazards, but it's pretty much wide open. And then the, the back nine is like through the woods. So it's like almost two different courses. Yeah. That's not interesting, but um, it, <laughs> it, 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 it was fun. And um, I hit the round of my life on the front nine and I shot a 48. So that tells you how good I am at golf. I have, uh, if we want to talk golf real quick, one of the worst experiences of my life. And, and have I told the stories? Have, I haven't told the story of my, uh, top flight tour experience on this. Have I? Not I that I know. The only golf story you've told was the, uh, Sam Sneed one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is probably the, the, the largest display of love that my parents ever showed me is that like when I was probably like in eighth grade going between eighth grade and like my sophomore year of high school, I played a boatload of golf. Most golf I've ever played in my life. I was at the golf course during the season, probably every day. And, uh, to help me like, you know, capitalize on that fact my parents signed me up for, uh, well, I signed myself up for, and they supported me in this thing called the top flight tour, which was like AAU for golf, basically. Oh, but, okay. but here's the catch. I, I was like in, in casual golf. I was pretty decent golfer, L- low forties, high thirties golfer. Um, but I was mostly playing with my friends, very low pressure scenarios, never for any, no, the stakes were never high. Yeah. But how old were you again here? I was probably uh, like 16, maybe 15, okay. 16. Okay. And um, like, like the summer between eighth grade and high school is like probably when I played the most golf of my life. So maybe like 14, between 14 and 16. But I did it th- several years consecutively. Um, but here's the key part of all of this is that when I played in anything even re- re- like mildly resembling a competitive golf match, I sucked. I mean, I'm talking about whiffing. I'm talking about like, <laughs> top, topping the ball. I'm talking about everything you can do wrong. And I had never played golf in any kind of like moderately competitive arena. I'd only ever been just playing with my friends. I mean, keeping yeah. track of my score and stuff, but just playing with friends. I mean, we all, there was no pressure. Nobody was staring you down while you teed off or whatever. So I have, a, I have a couple good stories from having done this because uh, I'll keep to what I think are the best ones. Um, so the first one, I and I take it back to saying that it's the biggest show of affection my parents ever gave me because, like, I played AAU basketball too, which required a lot of, like, driving and traveling and yeah. paying for stuff for them. But here's the, the, the catch there was I was actually a competent basketball player. So there was at least – I gave them the enjoyment of being, like, well, yeah, we're going to drive all over the place, but at least Nathan is, like, good. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's it, nice to watch him do this. Sure. Uh, I, it was not nice to watch me play golf. It was <laughs> it was torture. And my mother and, and my buddy's mom used to dry, drive around their little golf cart at every, at every golf course that we would travel to all over the state and just watch us eat shit for 18 <laughs> straight holes. And yeah. um, 
so the first one of the first tournaments I ever played in uh, was at what I refer to as my home course, which was the country club that I was a member at in in West Virginia, and um, I got matched up. I'd never met kids that took golf as like their primary sport. I knew kids that took football as their you know they took it really seriously and they were like really into it. To me, golf was like a leisure thing that we did on the weekends or like you know in the summertime to, to sure. pass the time. Definitely. Uh, and these kids were like. These kids were fucking killers, man. I mean, they they were not interested in letting you have a mulligan. They were not interested in just, <laughs> I can't find my ball, just drop it. Like, all of the little, like, shortcuts that you have when you play casual golf. Yeah. Um, but while I played a lot of golf back then, I also was relatively new to golf. So a lot of terminology was lost on me, things like that. And I would find myself in a scenario where I was just like, I, the words coming out of this person's mouth are complete gibberish. I don't know what they mean. I don't know what they're asking me to do. So, <laughs> so the this tournament started off by me um, teeing off from the uh, white tees and topping the ball and having the ball hit the uh, red women's tee marker yeah. and actually bounce behind me. Yeah. So it rolled <laughs> and, and hit the tee marker. And it bounced straight back. So my second shot was still in the tee box, but further back. Holy from shit, where, God. From where I had started. So that, in a competition? That was, That's hilarious. In a, in a competition. People are standing around watching me. I'm like, well, might as well just pack it up now. But easily the dumbest thing I did that entire tournament, which there were a lot of dumb moves. But we, I remember we were on the green. And um, I, had, I was waiting on my turn to putt. And I was like right in this guy's line. And he and I had my ball marker put down, and he said, "Do you mind moving your ball marker one?" I still remember because it, it, like it was yesterday. So one club length to the left, right? Because they would let you like use your club as like a, you know, like measuring, and you would yeah, lay it down, measuring. yeah, and then move the the ball marker from one end of the club to the other. Then when it was your turn, just do the same, move it yeah. back to where it was, and put your ball down. I had never even heard of that. That concept to me was like, <laughs> like, like I. I, well, he kept saying, move at a club length. And, and like he would say, move at a club length. And he said it so many times that I thought like move at a club length was like one word. Like I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Are, what is he <laughs> saying? Measurement. I have the, no idea. Like, like, do what? And and so I just like am going through the mo- – God damn, this is so ridiculous. I, I was just going through the motions. And I'm like, well, I, I'm trying to think. I'm like, he wants me to – move my ball marker but i don't know he also wants me to like know how to put it back where it was like i think that's what he's asking me to do so what i do is i i this is the best all i can figure out is these ask me to remove my ball marker and something about my club do something yeah. with your club and move your ball marker <laughs> and so you I, no 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 no, no. What, you just put the ball marker away <laughs> way way worse so i take the this is so stupid. I, it's it's I I can't even believe it. I I you, you know the story's not made up because this what I did next was so stupid. So I pick the ball marker up and I'm like, how am I gonna know where to put this thing back? So I take the head of my putter of like an Odyssey club putter Jesus and I just Christ. and I just jam it down oh, into the green. My God! And, and I make this like <laughs> right in I line. make this like physical divot in the green <laughs> as like a little marker. <laughs> Where I can go back to, yeah. so I have now. I have now. Where was just my ball marker was in this way. This guy now has to putt around the, the look oh, on, on his, the ground. The hole in the ground. <laughs> That's so funny. That's the so look, funny. the look on this kid's face when he watched me get like on my hands and knees and take the head of my putter <laughs> and just roll it into the green and like make this like indentation and then stand up and look at him and go, "There you go." And like, <laughs> He probably thought you were just being an asshole. He, I, I, he, he probably absolutely did. I mean, those kids were so mean to me. It, it's I've never I've always said I've never been bullied before. Not really. That's probably the closest I'd ever been to being bullied is when I would play in those tournaments because I was just such a buffoon. I also uh, two two stories, uh, two more real quick. These are really good. Well, hold I, on. I, let me let me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to comment on that one real quick because uh-huh. like I don't really. I don't take golf that seriously. Like I've just gotten mm-hmm. into it like the last two years or whatever. So, sure. um, but I know enough 
And I, like, even I don't, I tell people to pick up their ball all the time or like get a better lie or whatever. Um, if you made an indent on the green right in front of my putt, as much as I don't care about golf, I would have been like, fuck you, dude. What yeah, is yeah your, right, right, right. What is your it, fucking problem? <laughs> well, it, the, looking back good. on it, I, I'd never if viewed it as like potentially interpreted as intentional, like as me doing it like to screw with him. But that's a hundred percent what he probably thought. <laughs> right. I mean, if it, this is a tournament, right? The mm-hmm. thought process is probably this guy knows what he's doing. So to see you do that, he probably just had to have been like, "Well, fuck you then." <laughs> right. <laughs> but then, but then I got a reputation around there for like not having any idea what I did. So people really dreaded being paired with me. <laughs> um, you were the bad and, boy. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Bad boy uh, of gold. Uh, one, the other one that <laughs> I showed up to this tournament in Moundsville, West Virginia, one time, and uh, I was taking some practice swings, and there's this one kid that like who I just knew didn't like me, and because our last names were in the same like alphabetical place, like we always got kind of paired together. I'm gonna um, have to play with this fucking dickhead. That's and uh, I was you're walking off, in, and, and you're I'm walking trying to be like, like Rodman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm. We're in the tee box. I'm. I'm hitting some like practice, taking some practice swings, and all this kind of thing. And he's looking at me, and I try to be like casual with him. And I and I take this practice swing, and I take this divot out of the ground that is the size of a 18 ounce ribeye steak, and <laughs> and it goes flying through the air and smacks this kid oh, right yes. right in his chest. <laughs> I mean, like, like just like he took a like he took a fastball right to the chest plate. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he was obviously wearing. I remember this kid wore a KPMG hat, and it made me hate him so much. <laughs> Which is like KPMG is a, a wealth management company. You just know that hat because that's what Phil Mickelson wears. Right. It's not a golf hat. Uh, <laughs> and and that kid despised me. But the the story that I was really thinking of from that tournament is my buddy Charles, who I've mentioned on this podcast before, who's now a musician. Um, decided to like play in that one. Uh, as well, because we all we all kind of play golf for one another for fun. Um, and like halfway through the tournament, <laughs> he kept taking his clubs out of his bag, and every time he'd go, it, there was all this shit on the grips, like all this like like brown stuff and like all this shit on the grips. <laughs> it turns out that he had dropped a, a Snickers bar down <laughs> to, down to the bottom of his golf bag that had subsequently melted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, he just has chocolate all over his and, hands, and, and the the golf grips were covered, like head to toe in chocolate from this melted sugar bar. <laughs> every time, every time he would take the clothes and put them back in, it would like jam the the like the wrapper around in there and just like re. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that was oh my god, those were some times. Full chocolate hands. My my buddy Sam, uh, the the. The, probably the most famous story to come out of that era of my life was my buddy wound up with a 31 on a par three in one of those tournaments because okay. he just could not get past the water. Whoa, wait, wait. He shot 31 on 31 a hole? 31 strokes on one hole. Jesus, dude. Yeah. It was – so it, it should have been 30, but at the last moment he got a penalty from one of the rules judges that was standing like on the wood line and didn't see him. And – uh, the famous line was that, like, we were on the fourth hole of that course, and Sam was playing, like, lights out. I think he, like, birdied the two hole, first two holes and, like, parred the third. And he came around the corner and uh, getting ready to tee off on the, uh, the par three for the fourth hole. And he, he looks at me and my mom and he goes, I'm in fuego today. <laughs> <laughs> and then, famous and last then, words. And then proceeds to, hit it, proceeds to hit it in the water so many times that he gets his score up into the 20s and then finally gets uh, it across the water and then, like, of course, screws around uh, trying to get it on the green, chip, short, long, back, forth, finally gets it close enough. And at the last minute, like, he finally gets his ball, like, a little tap in. And he's so pissed off that he just taps it between his legs to go in the hole. And there's a rules judge on the wood line that he didn't see him. What's a one-point stroke penalty (laughs) if you putt the ball between your legs? It's like a, a, a like a prof, like a sportsmanship penalty for like screwing around, and, and the it, and the rules judge comes up. He goes, "Son, that's gonna have to be another penalty stroke. There, uh, you're not allowed to putt it between <laughs> your legs." 
Come Sam on, man. Just like threw his putter at that point. It was like all that's, over. But that, that's, that, that's cruel and unusual punishment. That, that, round, was, that yeah. round was cooked after that. One. Wow. Jeez. Kind of a classic uh, 10 cup one upper situation there. Yes. Yes. But man alive. When I, when I put that little dent in that green, I thought that kid was going <laughs> to. I well, thought he would come after me. Speaking of that, you mentioned that, like you just didn't know that that was like a thing you did or an etiquette or you, right. So I have this is unrelated. It's a football story, but when I was a kid, this is in Pee Wee. Um, I was the quarterback, not to brag. And there was at the end of the season, there was always just like some other special thing. Like the season just never ended. Like there was like the championship game, and then there was like an All Star game. And then there was like an all-star game that was like just the sixth graders. And then there was like the all-star black game. And then the the end of the season, there was another one. And we're like, Jesus Christ, I want the all-star diamond game. Yeah. Was what filed it out. They just kept they just kept whittling down the best players until it was a one on one football game. Basically, yes. <laughs> yeah. So just I'm center center yeah. and nose tackle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing quarterback in the All Star Diamond game, and they're playing it at the high school stadium. So my head is you know gigantic. I'm loving this, and there's like a lot of people there. It's at the high school stadium, and our last drive, uh, yeah, end of the game, fourth quarter was like I don't know, twelve seconds left. We're down by like four. And we're running up to the line, and they're yelling like, "Like spike it, spike it, clock it!" And that was like such a weird concept to me. I'd never heard of that. I'd like throw the ball at the ground. Well, how's that gonna help? <laughs> like I didn't get it at all. And people are just screaming at me like, "Snap the ball and spike it!" And I'm just like, "Am I insane? Why would I do that?" <laughs> so eventually, I was just like, "Whatever, man. If that's what you want me to do." And like went under and like snapped it and spiked it but by then the cl- time had ran off the clock and I blew it because I had no idea what to do. You put a divot in the green. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean I was like 10. Uh, how the fuck did I yeah. know? You're supposed to spike it. Stops the clock. Oh, I didn't Jesus. know that. My buddy uh, in one of those golf tournaments um, he actually played golf in high school and, and was like a decent golfer and played on the high school team. I played on the high school team one year as well and uh, he, he was getting so there was this one kid that played on the top flight tour that was kind of famous because he was so young and he was so good. He was probably like, if we were, if we were at this point, I was no longer playing in it, but my buddy was, if we were like 17, this kid was probably like 13 and he was playing in the like upper high school echelon of the tournament and winning frequently. Um, and, and, uh, so I guess I guess my buddy gets stuck in this group with this kid, and this kid was also like really cocky, and and he is just he is just beating the dog shit out of my friend, like just every hole, just like cooking him, out driving him, out chipping him, out putting him in every single way, and he's just like chirping him the whole time, <laughs> telling him he sucks. This kid's like thirteen. Love that. And we get a text from my buddy, and he's like he's like I got to get out of this. Tur-. He's like I'm playing in a top play tournament right now. I got to get out of this tournament. Like I. Can you guys come get me? Like, I'll fake an injury or something like that. <laughs> and we're like, we're like, well, what do you mean? He's like, I just want to. He goes, I still. He says, I want to go eat hot dogs because there's this like good hot dog place over by the golf course. So we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah hot dogs sound good. We'll come get you. So we roll out there because I'm a member at the country club they're playing at. I just grab a cart and we just go out. And we find him on like the sixth hole, and he's in the middle of the fairway, and uh, his ball is like he's like third up third to hit because they played in groups of four and uh he comes over to the cart he's like all right he's like, here's the deal i'm going to intentionally chunk this ball and i'm going to act like i have injured my wrist like i'm gonna like <laughs> basically like just throw the, my wrist into the ground and like and like i'm gonna do an acting job but i've hurt my wrist and i need to go I didn't know that was an option. I would have, I, I would have done that multiple times in my life if I thought that could get me out of it, playing the rest of my round. Right, right. And uh, and, and, <laughs> and looking back on it, like it definitely didn't need to be this like Ocean's Eleven style plan to just. I mean, we just literally he would have just needed to like pick his bag up and like hold his middle finger up and tell the people he was with like I'm leaving. <laughs> um, and uh, so he goes out in the middle of the fairway and he chunks this thing very obviously. He falls to his knee and like like grasps his wrist like and like looks at it like in like a real like like Shakespearean like ah 
kind of way. <laughs> and, yeah. and we pretend to be all concerned. Like I get out of the golf cart. I'm like, oh my God, like Clark, what, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> He's like, oh my God, my wrist. Like, oh, I, like I hit it. And we're like, oh, you, you, got, you better come with us, buddy. And, and uh, we like load his back in the cart and he hops in the back and we just, and like off into the distance. And the, he gets a text from one of his other buddies that's uh, playing in the tournament as well. Like, like several hours later, they're like, yeah, everybody's talking about how you like hurt your wrist. They're wondering where you're at and like, if you're okay. And, you know, uh, when they put the scores up at the end of the day, you know, you got a big like incomplete next to your name and everybody's wondering why. He's like, no, dude, we, <laughs> I faked that. that. That was bullshit. I want to go eat some hot dogs. I want to go eat some hot dogs. But I do, <laughs> I do not miss uh, participating. That was like public humiliation to me. Yeah, that sounds really brutal. I mean, uh, as someone who's never really played golf, I mean, Keith knows. When I started playing golf, it was mostly with Keith, like at, at Echo, which, you know, his dad lives by. Um, and I, I, I wasn't very good. I was not very good. I also I just, didn't understand the etiquette. I wore, yeah. I wore sandals um, and gym shorts, and also fell into a bunker one time and like destroyed a bunch of greenery. But yep. Anyway, that's probably enough talk about golf. Golf is stupid yeah. anyway. Except when I'm doing good at it, then it's fun. But um, then it rules. Yeah, then it's fun. But after my back nine, golf is stupid, and I never want to play it again. <laughs> uh, well, let's get back to what the Beers boys know then and talk a little baseball. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> did you see the pictures of in, I think, Korea? They put uh, just stuffed animals in all the seats in the stadium. Uh, Are you kidding me? I saw something like that. Like it was cardboard cutouts, right? They or did cardboard that... cutouts for a while and then they just did like, yeah, just stuffed animals. Yeah. What a hilariously Asian thing. I but, thought I saw one where there was like a, a, a sex doll. <laughs> Did you see that? No. <laughs> yeah, there was like a legitimate like sex doll, like, you know, with her, you know, leaning back with her mouth open. I got the visual, <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're like, yeah, you can't really do that. that. That doesn't make sense. Well, I was thinking like how degrading would it be to be the guy who works at the stadium and has to put stuffed animals in all the seats and then pick them up at the end of the day? <laughs> That's like, that, that's like uh, that guy. I'd for sure put a sex doll in there just to be like, yeah. Fuck this. That, that's like what Costanza would have done if this was going on during <laughs> where he worked for the Yankees. He would have been in charge of that. That would that sounds like a Seinfeld episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand the point of that, but I mean, I guess you want to make the stands feel like they're full, but they're not. Like everybody knows they're not. Why are we? Pretending that they are, or what does that boost the players, or what the hell is going we on? We were there? talking about in like I don't know episode two or something when we had Drew on. I think we were talking about uh, Japanese baseball and just like how serious they take baseball in those Asian countries, and they like have chance for every batter, and they like go super hard for their teams. Can you yeah. imagine like getting pissed off and like yelling at the TV watching a game while there's fucking stuff in their <laughs> behind? <laughs> yeah, you got to concede the point. Ridiculous. Um. <laughs> All along the lines of baseball, if I could slide my segment in here real quick, I think other than uh, Freddie Adu in episode one, all of my remember this guys have been football players, I think. Probably, yeah. I got a a curveball, if you will, for this one. Nice one. one. Uh, Can I guess who it is? Yeah, go ahead. Is it Daisuke? No, what a great Uh, name. Okay. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Uh, this is one that I, uh, much like uh, I think the last two I've done, uh, probably know him by reputation. Won't know if you'll know him by name. Maybe. Um, remember uh, Danny Almonte? Oh man, that name sounds really familiar to me. Yeah. No, I know the name. I don't. I don't. I don't know anything about this person though. He was like the forty-year-old that pitched in the Little League World Series. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Was he, he was from like, I actually heard something about this recently because like people, some people from like Cuba or like Dominican Republic, like actually don't know when they were born or like how old they are. So they like get here and they're just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm 14. So I I recently found out, and this is, this is just a quick aside. I'm interested to know if you guys knew this or not, but it's, it's popular for immigrants when they come here to say that their birthday is July 1st of like some year. They just say it's July first, like the first, the first, or I'm sorry, January first, like okay, like just yeah. So like if you 
look at like immigrant documents. I guess everyone's just born on the first of July that comes here from another country. I don't know. I I, I didn't know that that was a thing. Interesting. Yeah, but yeah. similar similar to that. I mean, they, I guess it's customary. Dominican Republic is where he's from. I guess it's customary there, like not to file or register a birth certificate until like years after. I don't know how that makes any sense. Okay. <clears throat> but his numbers in this little league word series were absolutely ridiculous. I mean, his first game, he threw a perfect game. Um, and in this perfect game, nobody even fouled one off. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these kids are just waving, like not even close. And uh, I think at the end, uh, he, he pitched in three games and he had a no hitter and a perfect game. <laughs> and uh, I think he faced a total of 72 batters and struck out 62 of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. What year was this? Oh, what year? Like 2012? Does that sound right? If, if you may have already said this, but what was his actual age? It, well, it wasn't 40. It was 14. Yeah. It was what? 14. Like he was, I think, uh, a couple months away from being 15 if the like whatever birth certificate they ended up with was actually accurate. Um, but the funny thing was, like, if you go back and watch some of those old clips of him just mowing these kids down, um, what the announcer can't stop saying is this kid is only 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's like clearly 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I guess they'd asked him like, I mean, how much of a moral compass can you expect this kid? He's a kid and like right. kind of doing whatever the coach tells him to, but they would ask him and like grill him. Like, did you know you were too old or whatever? And he would say like, when I was out on the field, I kind of felt like uh, these are little kids and I'm not, but I didn't know for sure, so I just kind of kept rolling with it. Holy shit. That's so <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, when that news broke, because it was like people started kind of sniffing around it and asking the question, and it kind of became a story in itself, and then they sent like a team of investigators or something to Dominican Republic to get like his, you know, quote unquote legitimate birth certificate. If that's what you want to call it there. Yeah. And, you know, like they discovered he was too old and oh man, that was a huge it, story. It, it is funny to think about the idea that like you're, we're talking about how this person like faked their age um, and it consequently just smoked everybody he encountered on the baseball field. And then you're like, wait, how old was he? Like 25? You're like, oh, 14. <laughs> but I mean, he could, was the age to be in high school and was playing little league. <laughs> yeah. So how uh, how old are the other little league kids then? Like ten? You have to be under twelve. Wow. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I was looking at some of his old videos and stuff on YouTube, and the one I was watching, the top comment was like, "Damn, I remember this. My man was cooking those ten year olds." <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think. Can you even throw breaking balls in Little League? Uh, he did. <laughs> he did. Okay. I thought it was like you could only throw so many, or like you couldn't throw breaking balls. So it'll be funny if he was just throwing heaters, you know, ninety pitches a game, <laughs> striking out. Well, I don't know if you're allowed or not allowed. I think it's more of a you're not supposed to because like if you're throwing curveballs at that age, it can like mess up your arm or something. Yeah, I thought they put a restriction on it because of that. That might but be. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I I thought maybe they put a limit on it, or like each batter you could throw a breaking ball or something like that. I but always I mean, hated. I always hated playing baseball because I was afraid of getting hit by the pitch. I sucked ass at baseball. Oh my and I, god! I didn't. Uh, you're right, Colombo. I was terrified of getting hit by the ball. That well, it the, looks like it the, would hurt the, so bad. Here's the thing: the people I was facing <laughs> weren't Danny Almonte. They were some <laughs> dipshit who from my middle school who couldn't throw the ball at all. Right. I, I was yeah. just I was a walking target. There was no sense of security. I feel like I, I would be more more uh comfortable at the plate against a MLB pitcher than I would yeah. a at least they'll put it over the plate. They're not yeah, gonna right. Yeah. They're not gonna hit me. Like stepping up to the batter's box when I was like ten was like just volunteering. It was like volunteering. Like a firing get, squad. Yeah, just get stung by a bee. It's like if you <laughs> <laughs> Like, if you knew you were going to get stunk by a bee, like, three out of ten times you stepped up to the plate, like, that was exactly. it. Exactly. 
I hated it. And like a coach oh, would tell you to like lean into one, you'd be like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. No. <laughs> you no. lean into it. <laughs> yeah, you lean into that shit. You see this guy fucking but yeah, firing off ball? In Little League, you're what, 20 feet away from home plate, and he was throwing uh, 78 mile an hour fastballs. <laughs> Jesus, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> These kids were swinging before the ball left his hand. It was They're like trying to hit like a Japanese bullet train. Yeah. Uh, so he, uh, I think he was pretty good in high school, and then he played at some small school in college, and just kind of that was it. But obviously, he's known as being the old guy in, in Little League Baseball. I feel like guys like that never actually have prosperous careers when, it, when it's time for them to do so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like the guy, your other guy that, that was like the freak athlete or whatever, McGuffey. Yeah, McGuffey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Either of you have a segment to service up? I think Joe did. Yeah, I'll I'll do one. So I'm not doing my over under this week, um, mostly because I was lazy yesterday and then busy today. So I did I did want to have a conversation. This is this might be more along the lines of like Columbo's just relax, but okay, I'm gonna right. I'm I'm gonna dub. This segment, it's called Settle This. I want you fellas to settle this. All right. So the other day, um, my girlfriend asked me to turn the air down. Uh, I'm on your side. (laughs) Just because of the girlfriend? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man, ducks fly together. Bros got to stay together. So she tells me to turn the air down, so I do what any person would do. Um, the, it's set at like 68. So I go and turn it to like 70. Um, so, which is like a little too warm for me. I prefer like 68, 66, but she wanted it down. So I turned it down. And, uh, so like oh, an hour mean later, down as in hotter. So this is the settle this, this okay. is the settle this. Okay. <laughs> Cause like she said, she didn't say anything to me for a little while. And then she, uh, like the other day, uh, she she came upstairs and the, the bedroom was like kind of warm. And she was like, uh, I'll go turn the air down. And I was like, no, don't turn it down. Turn it up. It's like hot up here. And she's like, yeah, I know it's hot up here. I'm going to go turn it down. I was like, no, turn the fucking air up. <laughs> so you're coming at it from a me- like a mechanical standpoint, as in turn... The, the dial. The dial, like, like, as make, opposed to the temperature, right? Yeah, make right. It, make, I'm saying make, make it go colder. The air conditioner unit, turn it up. Make it colder. That's what I want, and I think that means turn the air up. Absolutely. That that is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> um. And. Her mom did the same thing at her house, so I think it's like a family thing. She said, "Oh, I should turn the air down." Because it's a little warm in here. I would I, I would say turn the air down is generally referring to the temperature of the air. As in, I'm going to turn the temperature of the air down. It's confusing terminology. If somebody said, I'm going to go turn the air down, and all of a sudden it got hotter, I'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that I, was the problem. I so agree. I think maybe you say turn the AC up. Yeah. Yep. Or, like, if you, if you said turn the AC down... That means make it hotter in here. I love I love picturing this like uh, who's on first style. It, it really was. Like, like I, I it as like you stewing over it and just thinking in your head, I'm gonna ask my podcast buddies, they're gonna side with me. <laughs> well, I accidentally kind of yelled at her yesterday. Like I I snipped at her and then I leaned in and I was just like, you don't turn the fucking air down. You don't turn the air. Down. <laughs> And like, uh, yeah, so it turned into just a shouting match of like up versus down and what that means. Um, so boys, settle this. What happens when you turn the air down? The temperature goes down. It's colder. Yep. Wait, no, no, you didn't settle this. That's the opposite. You turn the air up to make it colder. Oh, I, I, it seems I'm not on your side then. Yeah, same. Okay, well, it's settled. Fuck. <laughs> Joe was so confident we gave him our answer. He goes, no, that you, you said the wrong thing. I thought we were absolutely on the same page. You turn the air up to make it colder, is my my thinking. Oof. Well, it's settled. Joe's new segment. Joe's wrong, actually. <laughs> God. 
All right. Well, I'm not telling my girlfriend about I was this. I say, make sure the shouty gives this episode a listen. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, we no. haven't talked. Go ahead. No, oh, no. I was going to say, um, I, I had a movie. I wanted to pick your all's brain about a movie thing. Uh, a movie that I recently watched, as in recently, as in today. I was sliding um, into movies here, so go for it. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear your, your favorite disaster movie. Because I watched, I love, probably disaster movie is like the most, the movie that I love the most but don't think about that often. Like, I watched Day After Tomorrow today. Yeah. And, and it is, by all objective measures, very bad. It, it does right. all the, the things that a movie should not do. The but day after tomorrow? Yeah, I can't keep my eyes off the screen. Hmm. Who's in day after tomorrow? I'm looking Dennis, over right now. Dennis Quaid and Jake Gyllenhaal are probably like the two big names. Oh, yeah. I know this movie. This movie stinks. I can only... <laughs> I, I, I'm picturing, like, is, is the cover like the Statue of Liberty is underwater or something? Yeah, it's yeah. frozen. Uh, but, okay. But it has... You have, like, all... It has all the tenets of a disaster movie. You've got um, you got to start out in some remote place where like the first sign of the issue is occurring, right? Like in like one guy sees it. That that as in in this one, it's like they're in Antarctica and like the ice cracks. So that's a, they're like oh like what's you know? And then the next thing is like the space station sees like a. Storm cell brewing, like no, but nobody's piecing the things together, and then and then everyone pieces it all together. And then you have to every disaster movie has the um, people getting woken up, like the scientists. They get the call at two in the morning. Yeah, so like what is it? Because um, I recently watched. I think it was. This is not necessarily a disaster movie, but it is kind of like one of these style movies. I think is it is it Contact? Contact. Uh, is that with? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep, it is Jodie Foster. Is that wow. the one they trash on in South Park? I'm not sure. He's just I... like dying, and it was Mr. Garrison. He's like passing away in, in the hospital, and they're like, anything you want to say like before you go? And he's like, that movie Contact was horrible. And they're like, <laughs> wait, what? And he's like, waited the whole movie just to find out the alien was his goddamn father. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, is, no, is that the that one? one. No, okay. Th- this is uh, it's Jodie Foster and she's like a it's Jodie Foster and James Woods. Those are the two. James Woods. Uh, it's a Robert Zemeckis movie. Hmm. Um, but uh, it's let actually me cut you off right here. Good. Let, yeah, sorry, let me cut you off. Yeah, there's I don't think there's any good disaster movie ever. Like, I, I as soon as you said disaster movie, I thought like Armageddon, which is not a good movie, but that was like the first one least, that in my mind. It's at least that's entertaining. My, that's my dad's favorite movie. <laughs> what a weird favorite I've always movie to have. I've always said that I have to plan my wedding around when FX is airing uh, <laughs> Armageddon cuz if it is happens to be on the same day, he will not come. He it stops him dead in his tracks if if we come across Armageddon. Does he get emotional? No, he just thinks it's rad. I, I'm it's not rad. really sure. Yeah. So it, I had. It's one of the dumbest movies of all time. I don't know if this is a disaster movie, but uh, I enjoyed. Uh, oh, uh, the Perfect Storm. Is that a disaster movie? Maybe. Oh, yeah. That's that's got John C. Riley in it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie. Well, in I haven't a long seen time. that for a long time. I was that... such anxiety. The, the disaster yeah. movie to end all disaster movies I've never seen, which is Titanic. You've never seen Titanic? I've never seen Titanic. Interesting. Oh, I have a funny thing about Titanic. This is how like um um how much of a baby I was. Like I was a mama's boy. I remember <laughs> I was at my buddy's my buddy Louie's um yeah. we about him in the last episode. And um Did you guys rem- remake it? No. <laughs> uh I don't think so. I don't think we ever did Titanic. We couldn't we we didn't have the special effects. Um but I remember calling my mom. I don't know how old I was, maybe 12. But like, even today, my mom will make me turn off the television if there's like, if they say shit or fuck or something like that. So I remember calling her when I was like 12 years old and I was like, 
hey, um, I'm at, I'm at Louis's house right now, and um, he wanted to watch Titanic. Um, I told him it's rated R, and uh, there's some nudity in it. I just wanted to make sure it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would make fun of you for that, but I was also one of those kids. I remember the first time uh, my parents um, took me. Well, this is not the first time they took me to Blockbuster, but like they took me to Blockbuster one time and like suggested that this movie to rent. And they're like, "Oh yeah, this is a movie like from when I was a kid. Like you'll really like it. It's great." And it was Fast Times at Ridgemont High, oh, which yeah. is like that's fraught. inappropriate. Oh my god! It, like the abortion is the main like theme. Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't believe. I'm, I was sitting there down in my basement watching with my buddies. I'm like. My mom suggested this movie. Holy <laughs> shit. I'm a man. Yeah. It was like my bar mitzvah. I, I was such a <laughs> pussy. All right. What were we talking about? Well, Sorry, Keith. Well, did you... Here's a good movie question real quick, though. At what age did your parents – because this answer varies widely between people. At what age were your parents like, oh, it's, it's chill if you watch like R-rated movies? To this very day, my mom would uh, would not expect me to watch that kind of filth. Really? Kind of filth. I'm 100% serious. Like, she would not allow it in her house, at least. And, like, if I suggested anything that was rated R. Like, so, like, what like, kind oh. of content does your mother enjoy? Uh, I don't know, like, uh, Wheel of Fortune and yeah. Jeopardy. She's a I big, think, like, and then watch... Have, like, a, a movie that she really likes, that you know that she likes? Dude, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I did watch a pretty. I watched, I watched Doubt with her. You know that movie? It's Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, what's her tits? Yep. Uh, Meryl Streep. Yep. I watched that movie with her, which is actually like more impactful than just like a nude, you know, like a, a, yeah, a movie a heavy, with like heavier. sex or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's probably the last movie I watched with her. And I was like, "What do you think?" And she was like, "Nah, it was fine." <laughs> was like, <"Okay." laughs> it's like yeah. a. My dad uh, famously doesn't really get into like m- like media in general. Like, not a big movie guy. Not not like likes movies and likes TV, but th- not much. Um, doesn't get as involved as people in our age group do. Like yeah, people sure. like like think about like what like a show like Game of Thrones has done to people. It's like warped their brain. Yeah. Sure. But I remember um, my dad really likes The Sopranos. It's like the one thing we have in common when it comes to TV. That's what's um, and and uh, I was home one time and my dad, my parents just got internet at their house. They didn't have internet for like the last decade. Um, really? Yeah. What? So yeah, it's it's a long story. That's they live out. They li- live on this like big hill, and uh, it was like hard to get internet out there. And they would just go off their like cell. They had like iPads with. 3G or 5G service or whatever. But yeah. my dad would watch The Sopranos on his iPad in the living room. And um, obviously, you watch the whole thing. It's one of the most famous, most controversial, most talked about endings in TV history. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, I came home one night and my dad was watching it. And I was like, <clears throat> oh, cool. Like, I was like, um, you're getting pretty close to the end. And he was like, yeah. And then like an hour later or so, I hear like... Uh, don't stop believing. Start playing. Yep, and, that's and you. Then I, I run downstairs and I'm like, "Oh, I gotta watch this with you. I want to see your reaction." He had no idea. Like he had missed, like all of the like talk of about that ending. So he had no idea what to expect. Nice. And I really nice. wanted to see like somebody that was into the show see what their first hand <laughs> re- reaction to that was. Yeah. And and it goes. I, I, everyone knows the ending. It's it's playing and then the screen just cuts to black. And uh, he takes his little finger. And he goes, <laughs> moves it out, up out of the way. And he just gives like a, hmm. yeah. And All I was right. like, what? What? <laughs> you know, re- response? He's like, uh, he's like, what? I'm like, that's the most controversial ending in television history. And you're back, you're moving on to playing uh, Angry Birds. <laughs> 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 but yeah, See, he just like, he, he didn't, it didn't even uh, cross his mind. Yeah, I have like six more episodes left with my girlfriend, and I'm pretty sure she stayed uh, pretty immune to under the, the understanding of the final episode. So I'm looking forward to her reaction. Um, yeah, but I think it's gonna be something similar. I think it'll just be like, hmm, well, that was that was good. I was shocked. <laughs> What's next? He literally just he literally just screwed, pushed it out of the way. Okay, that's crazy, man. 
so we've talked a lot about movies and television. Have we? I don't remember if we've ever discussed like documentaries or anything. Have we? Are you guys documentary folk? I love. Oh that. yeah. Yeah. I have I have one documentary that I watch probably three or four times a year, and that's Cocaine Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, I, that is a good. One. I love that documentary. There's there's one I'm addicted to. That's uh, it's I I. I always forget the name of it, but it's about uh, basically uh, marathon ma- marathon runners. Oh, the Barkley one. Yeah, yeah, the Barkley marathons. I forget exactly what it's called, but um, it's I think so it is fucking just called good. the Barkley marathons. It might be. I'll, is I'll it, Google it. But is it about training or something? No, it's like the actual marathon. It's just like these kind of like hillbillies who who just host this uh, race through the mountains. Oh. Uh, is this the, like people like break down and, like cry halfway through and shit like that? I think I've yeah. heard of this. Yeah. Usually it, there's no finishers. Right, right. Is, is it like held by like one guy? Uh, yeah, it's just like one yeah. hillbilly who loves to yep. run it. You're right, yep. Keith. It's called the Barkley Marathons. But anyway, I'd recommend that to anybody. I don't know why it's so addicting. I hate running, but um, that's the documentary I probably rewatch the most. It was definitely one of those where like people were suggesting it and it got a lot of buzz online and I'm just like, I can't find a mood for it because I know I can't care about a documentary about marathon running. Yeah. And then I watched it and was just like adamantly suggesting it to everyone. Yeah. I don't, I don't I, know what makes it so good. It's not even like great production value, but it's, it's really yeah, fucking. It's just one of those where like, I, I consider myself a, critic of many things regardless of whether I know about it or not and I'm like I don't have like the right words to say as to what makes it so encapsulating but you need to watch it I, yeah. I, I felt the same way about that uh, Alex Honnold movie um, Free Solo? Yes uh, see, That comes up for me so often and I've never watched it Dude it is so, so here's how I know it's good You know the guy doesn't die Yeah when he was tweeting you know about the- it Everybody's like, well, here's a spoiler. He didn't fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, I mean, you know, you know the ending. And yeah. Despite the fact that you know the ending, you watch it. You watch every second of that documentary like you don't know the ending. <laughs> and and he's also just like, he he probably could go Mike, toe-to-toe with Michael Jordan when it comes to just like nearly autistic levels of focus and yeah. drive. When he gets to the top, not spo- I mean, this doesn't really spoil anything. But he gets to the top, and he, he the first thing he says, he goes, that was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dead serious. Uh, Meru, that one's pretty good. It's a climbing one as well. I have not seen that one. But after he gets, after he's done free soloing that thing, uh, he goes back down to his van and starts working out again. Yeah, Jesus. he's a nut. And that, and that, sorry, I... One thing about the Barkley marathons that always stuck with me is how mu- how many calories they just have to eat between their loops, yeah. and they're like slamming Chef Boy RD like cold out of a can, and the whole time I'm thinking like that would give me the worst fucking heartburn, man. I couldn't walk two miles after like just slamming all those calories. Where can you watch this? Because this sounds like something that's up my alley. Check it on Amazon. I don't think it's okay. on Netflix, but um, I feel it's... like I watched it on Netflix, but it probably is not on there now. Yeah. Every time it comes up, like I want to, wa- I'll, I'll probably go watch it tonight because every time I like think about it, I want to see it again, which is kind of weird. But you brought up a great point, and I don't get it either because I'm watching him go through it, and yeah, like crushing like just whatever the temperature is, spaghettios out of a can, and getting back out there and running again. And right when they do that, my first thought is, uh, okay, heartburn and diarrhea. How are they fucking running another 60 miles? Yeah, it's insane. I was, so you I brought... was talking... Go Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just saying, I, I was talking to my dad recently. We, we were uh, went to the Columbus Running Company to pick up a pair of sneakers for my mom. And there, there's like a like the, the crew that works in there, they're all runners. And I just I said to my dad after we left, I said, what a blessing it would be to be born on this earth with like the thing that gives you joy in this life is running. Um, <laughs> yeah. These guys love running. They so think about true. running all they get up every day. Like, Oh, I can't wait to go for a run. <laughs> yeah. Can't <laughs> wait to move my legs back and forth. I wish right. dude. what I wouldn't give. <laughs> oh my God. It'd be amazing. Instead. I'm on a, instead of on a beer podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so Keith, you brought up documentaries. You see one recently that you liked? Yeah, I had one of my. I saw it on like a I don't know a list on Reddit or something. Never heard of it. 
it's I'm pretty sure you can watch it on YouTube. It's like older, kind of low quality. Not a lot went into it, but it was supremely interesting because it it's kind of like a how well would I do situation. Uh, Hands on hard body. You ever seen this one? No. No, I never heard of it. It's essentially it's a country town. I don't know if it's like south or like west or somewhere, but um, every year this uh, dealership, car dealership, hosts a competition. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Where you have yeah. to keep your hand on the car. Well, it was a truck, and the last person to take their hand off wins. Okay. And so it's like a, you know, who gives a fuck like. 92 Toyota truck. Like it wasn't <laughs> anything special. And so at a, ter- a certain point it becomes, you know, I'd love to have a free car regardless. Then it becomes just a competition thing. I don't really care about the car. I want to win. But yeah. and it was like insane, man. Like you you watch it like, okay, here's the competition and you're like, "Oh man, it's me. No way I'm letting my hand off that truck." These motherfuckers are going like over 80 hours. <laughs> and you got to stand the whole time. They're you got to stay awake. Um, dude, it was insane, man. That's wild. I now I think I have some watching to do after this. I uh, I'm gonna go pick up my Texas Roadhouse and I'm gonna watch the Barkley Marathons. You got yeah. some Texas Roadhouse coming for yeah. you? Oh yeah, nice. nice They're dude. all supremely confident, and like I would be too going in. Like I'm, I will not be a person who lets my hand off the truck. I'm gonna win it, and then you get to like even like lower numbers to what the person who won got like 10 hours in you'd be dude fuck this man i don't want this stupid ass i want to <laughs> <on> my couch <laughs> yeah absolutely so then you can kind of dice it around a little bit like it's a who cares truck whatever what if it was like a fucking lamborghini or something would, would people die with their hands on it <laughs> <laughs> is yeah i what was i gonna ask um are, are they like hicks where where is this where is this based? I don't remember where it is, but they were predominantly Hicks. Yeah, the one guy that asked people how they're doing and like, yeah, man, my feet really hurt. And like the people who have done it for like years are like given like pro tips. Like, uh, look at this fucking guy. He wore boots. What a dumbass. He's going to be out in six hours. You got to wear like a comfortable <laughs> shoe. <laughs> and then no, they it's interview. It's too amazed me what people can become a snob at. Yeah. <laughs> you come over to this one guy and you just got this like kind of stern look on his face and his trucker hat and they ask, you know, how you feeling, man? What do you think going forward? And he just like couldn't say anything other than like, I'm gonna win the truck. I I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna win the truck. Is there is there <laughs> uh is there like one character in this that's like the guy, the guy that's hold keeping his hand on all the cards? I mean like a perennial winner or something like that? There's one guy that had won two years. Now, I don't know if they were two years in a row, but he'd won it twice, and he did not win the episode I watched. Interesting. But, yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. hilarious. And I'm pretty sure you can watch it on YouTube. I'm trying to think of other documentaries, um, recent ones. You guys watch Wild Wild Country? I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, really, that was good. You know, that was good. But I'm way into anything, like, culty related I find interesting. Oh, yeah. I tried watching, uh, and this isn't necessarily a documentary, it's like more like a, well, I don't know what you call it, but uh, with uh, Waco, not yeah. that great, not that great. I saw it, and I, I didn't watch it, I just kind of saw it, and I was like, yeah, this is probably fine, I just don't really want to commit my time to it, I guess. Yeah, I enjoyed it, I thought it was pretty good, but what was kind of funny was, we've discussed at length uh, Friday Night Lights on this show, the TV show. Yeah. And the fact that I only know Taylor Kitsch as Tim, Tim Riggins, Riggins, the fullback of the Dillon Panthers, and now he's played or he's playing uh, David Koresh. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of funny. I thought he did all right with the role, though. I mean, it's not like you know an all-time series, but I thought it was a pretty good show. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't know anything about that. I, I watch. The, I'm more of a movie watcher when it comes to Friday Night Lights. Just more of a Billy Bob Thornton kind of guy. Definitely. Yeah. Tim McGraw. I'm a Tim McGraw kind of guy. Uh, let's just bust this fucking sixer open. Yeah. All right. I, was, I, I had fun putting this, get, this one together because I, I, I think I had some favorite childhood toys that were truly unique, but that will that people will remember. Yeah, I was wondering if we would have any crossover here because we're, I mean, we all grew up in the 90s, but we're, I think we're, what, 28, 29, 30? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 28. So we'll see. Uh, Clement, why don't you kick it off then? 
Okay, so my first one um, was uh, uh, the Nerf football with like the tail on the back of it. The vortex. Yep. Oh my god! What an I incredible! Bet. What an incredible toy! I bet I could throw it farther than you. Oh my god! It, it was that that little whistle. It would make. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You oh. hit it right. You Whew. couldn't convince me. I threw it under a hundred yards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was it was like. If you showed up to a, a West Virginia football tailgate without one of those, hit the pavement, buddy. You're out of here. Yeah. Lo- loser. But I love those things. And remember how many, like, ridiculous iterations of there, of it there was? There was, like, yeah. a mini one, and then there was, like, a gigantic one, and then there was, like, like an extra range one, and then the one that was whistled really loud. It was just like... <laughs> Wait, let, let me stop you there. Did, did, we, did I mention that this is the six-pack of our favorite childhood toys? I don't know if I no. mentioned it. Okay. It, well, that's no, what it is. That's we do a pretty is. bad job of actually <laughs> announcing that before we just start talking about like <laughs> songs that make us sad. <laughs> we just kind of start talking without the thought that uh, hopefully someone's listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that right. was my first one. That's a good one. Joe, you want to go? Yeah, I, I will. Um, mine are c- going to be kind of different. I, I feel like I didn't have that many toys growing up, but it's kind of like games I played with... Uh, uh, friends or like usually my older brothers, but um, or Louis we'll or my buddy Louis. Um, we'll where see. Is it. Louis? Where is he? Yeah, he's in. He's like an EMT. I think he lives in somewhere. He lives somewhere. It's not somebody you keep in touch with him. Uh, no, he Facebook ah. messaged me like uh, three months ago, and I was like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it was good to hear from him, but anyway, yeah. um, yeah, we grew apart. Um, my first one is Pokemon cards. Oh I my God. So I don't know if this is going to count. Keith, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to watch your face right now to see how you're going to react to this, well, but I struggled with it because I was a big Pokemon cards guy too. And I didn't know whether I would slot it into a toys category or not, but I knocked it around for sure. Probably not. I mean, it's not necessarily toys, but it's what I had fun with when I was a kid. And I mean, sure. just like convincing, convincing my mom to like drive to the comic book store and like getting that fresh pack of Pokemon cards. Oh, there was like, nothing like busting open a fresh pack. It's Christmas that was morning. Man. Really something. It's Christmas morning every time you open that and just looking for that fucking holographic Charizard. And oh, man. Uh, I used to keep them all in like a, a photo album. Um, and oh, yeah. I had oh, one of those. Yeah. Oh, Slide yeah. them in the little uh, pockets there. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Put what was your pants. most valuable card? Everybody had a card that was like the most valuable that like yeah. won. I had a second edition holographic, I think Bulbasaur, I, or maybe like the highest level of Bulbasaur, I can't really remember, um, but I had one of those, it was a holographic second edition, I'm not sure if it was actually good, but in my child brain, like having, just being able to say holographic second edition, um, it felt it good just, coming off the tongue, oh yeah, it just gave me a pre prepubescent heart on, just being able to flash that card. So wait, Columbo, were you a Pokemon guy or no? I did. I, 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 uh, my, the kind of parents that were not huge on like encouraging the Pokemon card thing, they thought that was like nerd shit. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I had Pokemon cards, but I played a lot of the Game Boy game, but as far as cards are concerned, I was much more of a baseball cards guy. I had a boatload of baseball cards, tens of I, thousands of baseball I cards. I struggled to, whether I should put those on there as well, because I was also a, a athletic card collector. I bought, with... <laughs> I bought a like pack of like six thousand baseball cards off eBay one time from the eighties, and they all came with the gum in them, and uh, okay. I ate the gum, and it was disgusting. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this, both of you, when it comes to cards and card collecting, were you buyers of the individual cards? Because I was always a your collection is based off what you get out of the pack. I was a pack guy. I didn't buy like an individual. I went card. to ba- I went to baseball card shows and bought individual cards. Oh uh, damn! Yeah, but but I also bought packs. Like I would if the baseball card show came to town, aka was at the in the lobby of the mall. Um, right. I would go and like buy like autographed cards, shit like that. Yeah, I didn't really know the market for like cards or anything like that. So I just kind of bought packs and like treasured the ones that I liked. You know what I mean? Like if I got a Ken Griffey Jr. card, I have no idea what that actually means, but I liked the Reds and Ken Griffey. So like that's my favorite card now. Well, I had like 
I, the question that was posed before was what was the best card you had? We're talking about Pokemon now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a holographic uh, Zapdos. Mm. And that was meant more to me than having like a Charizard that I bought at the store because I fucking got it in a pack. So that was yeah, like, yeah. my top card. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I did trade with like, oh, like neighborhood trading. kids. Yeah, like... It, and I don't even mean to bring something else up into this, but like silly bands was kind of the same thing. I mean, I yeah. was like, you know, in college, but I worked with kids. So right. like I would, uh, I would basically, um, barter with them to make them shut the fuck up and give, give them nice silly bands. But that was kind of like how I treated Pokemon cards. It was, uh, is I don't know. It was, it was, I, it was fun. Dude, getting together with your buddies and busting out your binders. And just Absolutely, talking man. So <laughs> talk and shop. Chewing the fat. Yep. Uh, okay, so I had... Uh, you grew up in the 90s. No matter who you were, you were a wrestling guy. Uh, I had all the wrestling uh, figures. Oh, yeah. And I had a few of those. Not only did I have all my favorite wrestling guys, I had the ring, and I had the little like uh, cage match thing that went on top of the ring. Oh, damn. And I had little uh, like uh, like banquet tables you could like smash people on. I loved the wrestling guys. Did you have like the 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 plush doll that like when you would like twist its arm be like ow? Remember that? That's thing? what I was thinking. No, yeah. I had just like the, the figurines. The, you'd like body slam them. Be like ow, brother. I actually <laughs> went back to uh, my old Wait. box of. Uh, go ahead. Uh, no, ow, brother! It's yeah. like uh, the most effeminate Hulk Hogan ever. <laughs> yeah. Ow, brother! brother. <laughs> Jeez, uh, but yeah, I found an old box of my old uh, wrestling guys, and oh man, they're all beat to shit because I, I was wrestling. You used them, yeah. Yep. Don't put that in there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Gay Hulk Hogan is my new favorite. <laughs> okay, so my second one. Uh, this one was easy, um, mostly because it's something I still play with, and it's that would be Legos. Uh, I knew you were gonna put Legos on there. Yeah, I, I still, um, I, I think play is, is, a, is, I still build Legos fairly regularly. Um, nice. I'd say once every two months, I'll go buy a new like thing, bust it open. Uh, they've got some like they've got some pretty cool uh, adult angled Legos now that are a absolute blast. Putting it together is. my little Lego city as as a kid was the time of my life. It's weird to say, but yes, they do have like adult Legos. I mean, you can buy like the Burj Khalif in Lego, and like I that. have, I have it. Do you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> What's um, your latest build, Columbo? Uh, the 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 State House, the ca- or the Capitol Building. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but the, yeah, I, I buy all the um, architectural series ones. So I have like Falling Water. I have like the Louvre, um, that kind of thing. The Louvre. Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could hate on that, but like I really can't because it sounds like a hobby that would be kind of like rewarding, I guess. Yeah, I mean, drink a beer, build some Legos, it's fun. Yeah, and it, yeah, that sounds that, pretty cool. That does sound awesome. Monzo, to you. Okay, sorry, I gotta unlock my phone. Um, what were we? Oh, okay. So this is another kind of more of a collector item than a toy but it also was a toy so i'm talking about pogs here um kind of the same vibe you could get with pokemon cards and that you could like kind of trade with your buddies and like play the game at the same time um like trading slammers like you get a nice fucking man you get a nice slammer you're like that's a prized possession so i had a silver one that would wreck cities (laughs) <laughs> yeah so um and then my brothers had them as well so we we play in the house uh too um but yeah pogs i considered putting pogs on mine i had you know the tube of them you know yeah yeah i also didn't know that they were called milk caps apparently they're called milk caps as well oh really i always call them pogs but um my second one i had uh sock boppers Nice. Me and my buddies would beat the shit out of each other with those things. <laughs> and it was always like uh, you had to have a backup set because I was popping them on some grills for sure. <laughs> I had a mean right as an eight-year-old. I'm sure you did, man. 
But yeah, that's my second. Columbus, son. Um, let me see. So, oh yeah, this one was so stupid. Uh, the do you remember the self pump basketball, the one that had like the little like thing yeah. in it that you would pump it up? Yeah. That, there should have been a consumer protection act uh, <laughs> thing filed. Uh, also, how fraudulent that ball was. Absolutely, dude. It, it was awful. Terrible. After two uses, the the pump area would just like push out, and you couldn't even dribble it anymore. Um, but I remember the ad was like Paul Pierce, and he would like have it uh, like the ball was completely deflated, and then they passed it through the gate, and then he like pumps it up all the way. <laughs> it's like no, no way. Yeah, it was a great ad. <laughs> <laughs> it got you okay yeah they had soccer balls like that too and they're always the worst fucking soccer balls they'd be lopsided after two uses yeah okay meet back to me yep so um again kind of a personal experience one but I'm going to go with uh, G.I. Joe's, and I'm not talking about, like, the action figures where you can, like, manipulate their arms and shit. I'm talking about, like, the green, just like, you know, they're on that green little platform and they're in different poses, right? You know what I'm talking about here? Yeah, because I was thinking about it, too, because when you say G.I. Joe, most people think of, like, yeah, the big action figures. I had a million G.I. Joe's, but they're all the little plastic guys. Yeah, maybe that's not what you call them, actually, and that name just got attached to them, but... um. What me and my brothers used to do um, is that we'd we'd set up like uh, we'd set up like a battlefield on each side of the room, and then place our GI Joes at like different areas, and then we just have like hundreds of rubber bands, and we just shoot at each other's like uh, 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 front lines and shit, and whoever like knocked down all the GI Joes first like won the battle. So that was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I never got that creative with them. I just kind of set them up and then was like, oh, well, that's it, I guess. Yeah, I used to love that. I never won, by the way. All these all these things I'm bringing up, like my brothers just like kind of let me play or like watch them play and were assholes about it. <laughs> but yeah, just... That's a good one. Um, I had... Okay, this this one... So the, the six-pack is... Uh, best 90s toys or kids toys when we grew up in the 90s this one has survived the test of time but was a thing that i played with as a child in the 90s uh i had the uh, backdoor basketball hoop on there oh my god <laughs> just got so much use yeah and I, of course i mean i had like 12 of them because when it was dunk time you were chattering it every fucking time All right, my next one. Uh, this one was, man, I'll save this one. I was gonna say everybody had a, a point in their childhood where they got the airsoft gun. Did yeah. you guys were you guys airsoft gun people? I was an airsoft gun guy. Yeah. Oh my god, they ran our lives for a, for a <laughs> while. My, my neighborhood was like a war zone because yeah. everybody, every kid just had a, a AR fifteen airsoft gun, and it we, was it was on it was on site as soon as you you know stepped on the property. You put on one of those like uh, plastic army helmets and like tactical glasses and just go at it. Oh yeah, yeah. I even uh, I had uh, I had paintball guns too, but I never did use them. Yeah, see, I, I like I wanted to get into paintball and I had like a cheap paintball gun, but yeah, I'm scared I mean, of getting shot. Wasn't a big paintball guy by any means. Yeah, no, no. All right, Joe. Yep. Sorry, I, I slammed a bunch of water this morning because I felt dehydrated, and then I slammed a bunch of beer at the golf course, so I really had to fucking pee. Is that your dog, or is that yeah, your... uh, yeah? It's my dog, and he's fucking up all my cords right now and being annoying. Um, is he a good boy? Uh, you know, I'd I'd really like to say that he is, but most of the time, <laughs> the answer is no. He's got a good heart. I'll give him that. Um, Hot Wheels. Nobody, you didn't say Hot Wheels while I was gone, did you? Nope. Okay, so, um, yeah, setting up the tracks, like, throughout the house, making them, like, real intricate and doing loop-to-loops and, like, kind of freestyling with it. Um, that was a lot of fun. And then also, I guess I'm kind of a collector because, like, you had your favorite cars. You kind of collected the the coolest cars and, like, stuck to those. Um, 
Hot Wheels was fun. Another like all of these have act- most of these have actually been like good memories that I have with like my older brothers. Um, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, Hot Wheels kind of rock. Yeah, that makes me feel better about my one that I mentioned while you were gone. The uh, backdoor basketball hoop. Because that's something that obviously still exists today, but I played with in the 90s. <laughs> right. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, uh, it's supposed to be about things that just existed when we were children. Well, that's what I was thinking was a list is like best 90s toys, but it's a toy that I played with in the 90s, but it's not necessarily stricken to that era. Survived you it said, at the time. You, so you, said, Pokemon. you said best childhood toys, bitch. Yeah. Okay. Well, we were ch- children of the 90s. Yeah. The... Did I see your dog's balls, Columbo? Yeah, dude. He's walking over the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I saw his full-on asshole. He doesn't look embarrassed. Is he a good boy? Uh, on occasion. He's a little bit high-maintenance, but... Has his moments? Yeah, yeah. He likes right. to take one drink of water and act like he's getting ready to piss himself. <laughs> I've started having to... This is way off subject, sorry. But I've had to, like, start hand-feeding the dog... Because, like, I'll pour his food, and he'll look at me like I'm a fucking idiot. I, same here. I, Are you he, serious? We have to, uh, we'll sometimes, like, put it in the fridge and take it out of the fridge, so he thinks it's, like, food that we eat, too. That's so funny, because this is only kind of recent. Maybe, like, when I started working from home, like, I think he's kind of fucked up, um, just, like, with the schedule and shit. But yeah. now, I'll pour his food, and he'll just, like, step back and look at me, like, hey, when are you going to give me my food? So then I have to go and like take a handful and like put it in his mouth and then I'll right. start eating. Right. So, all right. Anyway, he's probably dying, but dogs these days. Dogs these days. Uh, I had. He's a 90s dog. Columbo, you might characterize this as a female tendency, but uh, I had the uh, Gigapets, the Tamagotchis. Oh, God. Oh, good one, dude. Yeah. I'm just happy to hear you call it a Gigapet. I forgot about that being the term. Tamagotchi, I feel like people refer to them now in retrospect as tamagotchis but at the time they were gigapets and the thing was like dude i spent so much fucking time on that thing and i was so pumped to get it and was like that's what i was thinking about constantly it was like checking my fucking gigapet <laughs> it was a I, responsibility it popped into my head i don't know i must have been in college or something like oh you remember these things or whatever i got on amazon and i like, found one like from that original generation of them and I mean, it was like five bucks, bought one. Like, this will be cool. It is the fucking worst, dude. There is no interest level whatsoever. <laughs> I have no idea how I was so engrossed in this when I was a child. Me neither. I remember mine. I had a Yoda. I had a Yoda I had to feed. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'd have to be like, nah, I, I can't hang out after school. I got to go check on my Yoda. That's how I thought it was going to be, man. No, it did not withstand the test of time. Hmm. That's why the backdoor basketball hoop and the Pokemon and so forth still exist, and the Tamagotchis do not. Well, True if story. We're, if we're talking fad toys, then this my next one is the ultimate in fad toy. What kind um, of toys? <laughs> Easy. Fad. Fad. Go on. Go uh, on. So, um, you guys may or may not remember this era. Do you remember when um, those? I I refer to them as pocket bikes, uh, but like the miniature like cross rocket things. Like tech decks? No, 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 no. I mean, like you could ride them. They were like, oh yeah, you're like legs are all out to the side. Yeah. So yeah. I had I had one of these things, and it was the most. It was like, it was like, uh, it was the lead paint of of like the '90s toys. Like, I, it's amazing that they sold these to kids. So I had one of these things, and it was like probably the size. It looked like a like a Repsol like a crotch rocket like Moto GP bike. It's yeah. the and motorcycle version of like a clown car. Yeah, basically. <laughs> except except this thing ran on actual fuel. And yeah. and went forty or fifty miles an hour. You could get it, cooking on those things. It Jesus. Was crazy. And 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 it was like an absolute death sentence too, because you know, like a car would never see you. Ever in a million years, because I would like ride them from like house to house, <laughs> like my friend's house, and you're just like on the ground. The only reason that you would be aware because they were so loud. They and and I got this thing off of eBay, and I remember it was five hundred dollars, and I don't know how I got five hundred dollars from my parents. Sure, shit, didn't give it to me, and uh, it showed up in this box, and it was just like, honestly, guys, a motor. It was a it was a real life motorcycle in a box. 
It is literally <laughs> a motorcycle. Yeah. And, and it's just small. It was it was terrifying. But man alive did I think I was cool on that thing. It was like just the coolest thing and you can't believe like I have like a real motorcycle. It just happens to be smaller and this is kick ass. And then <laughs> you wreck it and you're like, Why would my parents buy me this? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. It was This it is was so crazy. irresponsible. I, I remember I think it probably came from like China or something. And I think it I think it took like six months to ship. And I just remember that one day coming home and that big ass box was sitting in front of the, the garage door. I about had a conniption. Man, that thing ruled. But that that toy defined my life. It's not really a toy, but it's something I played with a lot. That's sick. No, it, it's meant for kids, and no, it's not a toy. This is a dangerous <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, you should be wearing. Did you wear a helmet, or did you free? Uh, I think that I did. Yeah, because I I also had a dirt bike at home that I would oh, ride shit. around my neighborhood. Okay, um, that was like the coolest I ever was. I mean, yeah. I used to I used to have an. I mean, that was a real motorcycle that I would ride from friend to friends' houses. And, Did you have uh, any, were there any like subdivisions where it was just dirt and you could pack it into ramps and shit? No, I lived in like a suburban ass neighborhood. And I, just, okay. I was like the, what do they call it in like uh, Philly, like the 12 o'clock boys? I was like them. Oh my God, like, like them 12 o'clock. <laughs> I was Pulling like wheelies. wheelies through traffic and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, j- just a quick aside, uh, since we're nearing the end of the list, but this is the coolest I've ever been and ever will be, which was in sixth grade. The hottest girl in the grade had a birthday party, and she lived down the street from me. And I went to that birthday party on my motorcycle. Ooh, oh, man. Oh, my God. So <laughs> pep. It she's was over. Just, she's just dripping wet. Oh, my God. Well, I think you said I, sixth grade, so maybe I, I should. <laughs> I, 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 the word, word got around town that Nathan came to the, the uh, party on a motorcycle. I was regular, peace to James. all the other bachelors in the neighborhood. Yeah, I was like James Dean. I wish I could go back in time and just run you over. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, should I go? Yep. I, have, yep. I have two left. I don't know where you guys are. but um, So my second to last is going to be just classic dominoes. Um, and not, not playing the game with them, but just setting them up around the house. I, I'm starting. I'm starting to see the wealth inequality here in this podcast when mine is just like rubber bands and GI Joes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but dominoes is one, and like marbles, you know. So you just like set up the fucking domino track, and you know have have some marbles and some sticks falling down and shit like that, and like setting that up and like having it go off without a hitch was like uh, that felt really good. Man, I have, that that's a really funny way to look at this, though. I, it gets like to me and Kiefer. I'm like, wait, you guys didn't have retro Ferraris? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mine actually feeds off of that one very well. For okay. my fifth one, I had Domino Rally. You remember that? No. It was like their little plastic dominoes. Uh, they had kind of wide edges and then thinner in the middle, but they were meant for the like you know setting up a domino line. Oh, okay. So they came with like little things where like, yeah, you could knock a marble down a couple of things and they go through like a little chute. But uh, they were also plastic as opposed to whatever dominoes are made of, ceramic or whatever. So it had just a beautiful click when you'd knock them over. Uh, Click, 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 click. Yeah, and they were all different colors. Yeah, Domino Rally ruled. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, that's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it was basically dominoes that were meant for what you used them for. <laughs> how many people are playing dominoes? <laughs> dominoes. Yeah, right. Okay, um, so my last one. Uh, this is my. This is definitely like probably the most used toy. I feel like everybody here probably had one, um, and this was a Four Seasons. Uh, I'll call it a piece of equipment, but it, it, it falls squarely within toys because it was sold at toy stores, things like that. But everyone had, everyone I knew at least, had that plastic ramp that was just like a, a ramp. It was not yeah. necessarily designated for anything, but it could be your bike, it could be your skateboard, your scooter, your, uh, I used it sledding a lot, like to use as a ramp to go off, a, use a sled to go off of. But okay. that thing, that thing got winter, summer, fall, spring use. And yeah, uh, I know we, exactly what you're talking about. It was like it was. It's black, and it's probably. It felt like I was in the X Games. It's probably like six inches high. Yeah, and it was like, uh, I my life revolved around that as a kid, and I used it. Yeah, sledding, bike, whatever. And I remember, 
my parents once were like, you know, we'll get you a new bike if you want. It must be on like my birthday or something. So we went to like the local bicycle store and they're like, you know, what are you looking for? And I was like, uh, I have this black ramp that I go off of. I want it to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I I drug that ramp around like behind me like like kids in the fifties drug like a radio flyer. It yeah. just went every it just went everywhere with me. It was like, oh, I'll come over, I'll bring my ramp. We'll just we'll just go off this ramp in the driveway. Bust out the camcorder. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, Joe. Okay. Um. Oh, I'm trying to come up with a way to describe this. Um, but it's like a car or like a truck, like a plastic car or truck, probably on like plastic wheels or maybe rubber rubber wheels, but like bigger than Hot Wheels. Um. Bigger than Hot Wheels, maybe like those bulldozers or whatever you get in those oh, like yeah. action sets or something like that. Mm-hmm. I guess so not big. I, I mean, not like that small. Maybe like uh, a foot off the ground and like two feet long. Um, so, me and my brothers would get a bunch of those, and then we'd sit at opposite corners of the rooms and uh, just uh, ram them into each other as hard as we could uh, and kind of like a we call it the derby. Yeah. Um, and then whichever one broke the most, uh, they lost. And then my mom stopped buying those because they were just uh, like, there was just plastic shrapnel all over the house constantly, like <laughs> just stabbing your foot every time you walk. Um, but that was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. So just plastic cars that we rammed into each other as hard as we could. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. And my favorite part was I'd act like a mechanic after the derby and like take it <laughs> in, like, to the shop and put like duct tape on it. Hell yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. We had a lot of those like, you know, the next day you show up, you, you got to have a car. Nice. Otherwise you're out of the derby. So you got to do some fixer ups. Let's crank her up, put it on a Jenga block and fix it. <laughs> Yeah, just lifting them onto some Lincoln logs. Yeah, going to town. Uh, my last one was uh, rod hockey, the little like tabletop thing. It had the sticks, you could move the guys and twist oh, them and take the shots. Suck Dude. at that. Yeah, yeah, I do too. But if you got a nice slap shot, there's no better feeling in the world. Oh man, just slapping one in there. You're just twisting this little thing and knocking a little, you know, biscuit into the net and just talking shit. <laughs> Were you good at it? Uh, see, there's not being good at that game. It wasn't a very well put together game, despite the fact that I played it constantly. But uh, yeah, I was a big fan of that game. And uh, it well, was, was just... it like a was it a full size one? Like they have like the big ones that are kind of like uh, ping pong table sized, or are you are you talking about like a little like a smaller handheld one or something like that? This one was probably, it was like tabletops. It was probably like three feet long, I guess. Mm. But we would have like tournaments and stuff. And it it required no skill. You're just like spitting them as fast as you can, trying to slap one in the net. Yeah. It's like Mortal Kombat smashing buttons. Sure, yeah. So that's the end of my list. Uh, The only one thing I wanted to pepper in before we file out here is looking at 90s stuff this is more of a board game but i can't think of a board game that was more uh destined for disappointment than the jumanji board game <laughs> <laughs> i never I, I never played it i mean it after all, the, it was always going to underwhelm right after the movie you obviously had to make the board game but then you like bust it out and it like looks like just what you saw in the movie and you play it and you're like okay where are the lions <laughs> Yeah, kind of along those lines, a board game I never actually played, but I played a lot was Mousetrap, meaning like I don't know how that game works. I do, I would just set up the mousetrap and like Yeah, I don't think anybody does. As long as I'm get that marble rolling that I won. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, boys. That seems to be it. Let's see if I can get this fucking outro going. Uh most importantly, we don't know anything and neither do you. See you guys. See ya. Tell them we sent you. Tell them we sent you. Oh, yeah.